Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading from Genesis 37. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering the fields. The man asked him, what are you seeking? I'm seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, they have gone away. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes the dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands saying, let us not take his life, Reuben said to them shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore. And they took him and threw him into a pit, the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother?" and conceal his blood. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. 
when some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting them, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they took Joseph to Egypt. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks. The psalm for the day is Psalm 105. We'll read it in unison, please. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Romans 10. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of Christ. Please be seated if you're standing. I want to talk about Jesus today. And you might be thinking, sure, no problem. What's the big deal? This is church, even if it's remote church. We always talk about Jesus here. That's what we're supposed to do. And of course, that's true. We refer to him in our liturgy all the time. We read about him in the Gospels. I talk about him in sermons. And we all know at the core of our hearts that as Christians, we are in some sense Jesus' people. Jesus is what it's all about for us. But our gospel passage this morning is nothing if it's not an invitation for all of us to reconsider Jesus, to give him another look. Or to put it more poignantly, it's an invitation not just to talk about Jesus, but to walk toward him, to connect with him as a real person. Now, if this is beginning to sound a little too touchy-feely for you, if you're beginning to wonder if next I might ask you if you have a personal relationship with Jesus, if you're beginning to think this may be a little too low-brow for sophisticated Episcopalians, well, maybe therein lies our challenge. You see, we can't get around the fact that today Jesus is inviting us to come closer to him to walk toward him, even across some very turbulent seas. Our story is a familiar one, maybe among the most familiar in the Gospels. We might entitle it, The Boys in the Boat, a nod to the book published a while back about the dramatic win of the American crew team at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. And why not? In fact, scripture contains lots and lots of stories about people in boats. There's Noah and the ark. There's Jonah. There's Paul getting shipwrecked. And there are all those fisher folk out there in their boats trying to earn a meager living. Navigating the sea was and still is a prominent part of the Mediterranean world. And as it turns out, it's a prominent metaphor of the life of faith. Now, today's story is also told in Mark, but Matthew gives it a unique twist, which we'll get to in a moment. The story follows immediately on the heels of the feeding of the 5,000, which you'll remember we heard last week, another very well-known story. Jesus has been trying desperately to get a moment alone to pray. That's where he's going when he notices the hungry crowd 
and his compassion for them stops him in his tracks. He turns around, faces them, and ultimately gives them food that satisfies their hunger. And after he dismisses the crowds, he turns back to resume his place, his search for a quiet place to go off by himself and pray. He even dismisses his disciples. Get into the boat, he says, and go over to the other side of the lake. I'll meet you there later. Finally, he is alone, and he spends the evening in prayer. Meanwhile, the boys in the boat have been tossing about in the waves all night. The wind has picked up, the water is crashing over the sides and churning, and their anxiety is rising as they try to struggle against the wind. Early in the morning, after a night of turmoil, they look up and see what they think is a ghost walking toward them on the water. Maybe their exhaustion has gotten the better of them and they're hallucinating. Regardless, they all see it and they understandably are terrified. The apparition calls out to them from the early morning mist. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. It is the very familiar voice of Jesus. But how can it be? We left him back on the shore for a quiet night alone, and whoever heard of anyone walking on water, they don't know what to make of this. But they know they're terrified. And here's where Matthew's version of the story departs from Mark. Peter, foreshadowing Thomas of doubting fame, demands some proof that it's really Jesus. So he calls out, if it's really you, Jesus, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus obliges. He says, come toward me. So Peter not wanting the others to think he was just bluffing, leaves the boys in the boat, tenuously takes a step out onto the water, and begins miraculously to make his way toward Jesus. It's really happening. Jesus and Peter are walking toward each other. Closer and closer they come, the turbulent sea churning beneath them, Jesus' face is coming more fully into Peter's view. Peter yearns to get closer, closer. It's really him. There can be no doubt now. The ghostly figure is coming into focus. It is Jesus coming toward him. But then Peter drops his eyes and looks down. Always a mistake. The wind and the waves catch his attention and he starts to panic. He takes his eyes off Jesus and immediately begins to sink into the raging sea. Lord, save me, save me, he cries in desperation. And Jesus reaches out his hand and pulls him up from the darkness. You of little faith, he says to Peter, why did you doubt? Why do any of us doubt? Well, it turns out that doubt, at least on this side of eternity, is really simply part of the dynamic of faith. It's totally normal to wonder if it's really Jesus walking toward us. The gospel even attests to that. Think of all those post-resurrection stories, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus who don't recognize Jesus until he is revealed in the breaking of the bread. The disciples who, after the resurrection, think they're seeing a ghost. Mary Magdalene, who thinks he's the gardener. All of them are people who knew Jesus well, who you think would recognize him. And yet, even when he's standing right before them, they can't believe it's really him present among them. And here the boys in the boat let doubt get in the way of their perceiving who is actually walking toward them. 
they imagine they're experiencing something else, a ghost, maybe even a figment of their imagination. But now recall a very different story, also from the Gospels, the one of the man whose son is possessed by a violent spirit. He cries out in his distress to Jesus, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. He's expressing the universal truth that when desperation strips everything else away, all he has to offer in the end is his desire for faith. His faith itself might at times be shaky and unsure, but he desires it nonetheless. That's the same desire, the same passion, the same energy that impels Peter to step out of the boat and begin to walk toward that faint image of Jesus he sees and hears in the distance. It's the same desire that impels us to come together each week, even if it's on a screen. I'm caught by that powerful preposition in this story, the word toward. In the midst of their distress, Jesus walks toward the disciples. Jesus is always walking toward them, and he's always walking toward us. And Peter, wanting desperately to believe that it really is him, taps into his desire and walks toward Jesus. He's really doing it. He's really responding to his heart's desire. He's walking closer to Jesus. I believe that deep down all of us have a desire to get out of the boat and respond to Jesus' invitation. Come, walk toward me, even as I walk toward you. Let us meet on life's turbulent waters, in the turbulence of this anxious time in which we are living, even in the turbulence of your own faith. Keep your eyes up. Don't panic. I'm here coming toward you, and I will catch you if you start to sink. Come toward me. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. We continue by affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers in the name of our God, who always makes things work for good and is ever ready to reach out to save us, saying, God, mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, 
especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Thomas, our bishop, and John, our priest. We pray for the province de Lux Angles and Angelique de Rwanda, and for the summer chapel congregations of All Saints by the Sea, Bailey Island, and All Saints Oars Island. We pray for seafarers and those who make their living from the earth and from the sea. We pray that God's people may ever grow discouraged, just never grow discouraged, despite the winds and waves against them. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For this parish family, that we may hear the voice of Jesus calling us to not be afraid and learn to trust in God's saving care. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who, for the, all those facing health or economic crisis, that they may hear Christ's invitation to step forward in faith and find healing and hope as they take Christ's hand. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who sail, who make their living on the sea, that God will protect and guide them. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are working to end the coronavirus, that God will give strength to those caring for the sick, wisdom to those searching for a cure, and insight to those working on a vaccine. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the, all who experience the storms of daily life and all who, those in need of our prayers, that they may be held up by the strong hand of God. Let us pray for Janet Davenport, Bruce Probert's wife, Kendra, Cindy Condon, Anna Williams, Alex Almire Beck, Jeremy Ward, Deborah Pickering. God of mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the departed, remembering us especially those from our parish family who've left us this year, that God will lead them safely to the haven of eternal life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Margaret and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To, to you, you, O Lord, Lord our, our God. God. Master and monarch of wind and water, hear the prayers we offer this day for all battered by the waves of this world and bring them and us in safety to your harbor through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, and in what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Peace all. Peace all. Peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body. You do this for the remembrance of me. I
to his spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.